Hey guys, welcome back to another order opening with the MTB Shed. We've got all kinds of things here today. It's been a while since we've done one, so um, we'll work our way through them. I've got one box opened up here, but um, there's another box below it, and then one here on the counter. We'll start on the one up top. Uh, basically, I go through just kind of, this is just a normal weekly order that comes in. And we'll see what we got. A lot of packaging. It's proprietary information. Um, so this is a fun one. We'll start things off uh, really interesting um, with, you know what, we'll start with the bottom bracket tool. So this is a BBT 47-12. Um, let's get this guy opened up on our screen. Get the bright light shining. Uh, so this is going to be your bottom bracket tool. Let's see which guy this is. Um, so this is one I do not have. I think I specifically got this one for the Enduro bearings, the BBT 47-12. Um, it looks like the one for the Enduro bearings. So, um, yeah, if you are planning on installing the hose, then, uh, this is the bottom bracket for you. It measures 48.2 millimeters across, fits 12 notch. It doesn't tell me which ones and I don't recall but look that up we'll see if I was right or not <laughs> um, so yeah bottom bracket that's nice um, that we were able to get that <laughs> I don't know why it would matter all that much but um, our next item here I believe that is for the enduro bearings but check it out, BBT 4712. I think that's why I ordered it. Um, here we have this wonderful saddle. Uh, this is the biggest saddle available to me, and that's what my customer wanted. Um, we'll throw it on the close up just so you guys can get a real good gander. This is for a Hudson e bike. We sell Jameis Hudson's here. I really like it. Uh, this is for somebody who's going to be sitting straight upright. <laughs> Um, the widest possible saddle we could get something nice and comfortable for a really sweet lady. Um, so I'm excited that she'll get her big saddle. That's nice. Springs on there as well as you guys can see. That's nice. Um, this is neat. So this is the Park Tool RPP-1. Um, this is for our repair stands for the post so um, this is going to wrap around there and keep everything safe this is for the professional grade park tool stands um, we have one for sale we've got an extra one a single bike uh, with the base so contact me either hopefully you're already subscribed but uh, message me on social media give the shop a call uh, swing by we'll talk about it i can get you a really good price on that it'll get it out of my way uh, but it'll come with a nice new pad on it, so um, be looking forward to that. We'll just set that right here. Seems like a good place. All right, so that's fun. It actually looks like a mess. Um, Another important item that we have is the uh, SRAM T-Type. So these are going to be master links. Something to keep in mind with these guys is that your SRAM T-Type master links are going to be single use. So um, don't mess up. Uh, if you're running a T-Type transmission, make sure you got the SRAM Access app downloaded. Put in your, your make, year, and model of your bike. It'll let you know how long that chain's supposed to be so you don't have to resize. Um, but if you do remove your chain to clean it, you're going to need to install a new master link. So um, you can pick those up here at the shop, but make sure you got some with you um, even when you're out riding. Ideally, you're not going to run into issues, but maybe you will. So um, look at these up close here. 
Um, just to point out, this is for T-type chains only, so the ones with the flat top on them. Um, and again, single use only. So keep those things in mind. The flat obviously goes out. That's fun. Um, we obviously have uh, another mat for one of our shop stands. Um, this here is the CPT or CTP, uh, so chain tool pin from Park. This is for uh, the bigger chain breaker that they have. So um, I got some extra tips for us for here in the shop. Um, another neat tool. This is a pedal wrench. So we just posted some videos on YouTube, some shorts on um, pedal installation. Uh, so this is going to help you break a pedal free. Uh, your pedals are going to be 15 mil, um, but if you don't have something flat like this fella, it can make it really hard. So if you pick yourself up a park tool, PW5, this makes removing pedals super easy. Uh, this is a 15 mil. So just remember, anytime you're taking pedals off, you'll be going towards the rear of the bike. Uh, so you'll be rotating towards the rear of the bike. Anytime you're tightening pedals, you'll go towards the front of the bike. Um, so that doesn't matter if you're on the front or back of the pedal. If you're on the left or the right side, you'll always loosen towards the back and you'll tighten towards the front. So pick yourself a, up a PW5 from Park Tool. Get it here from the shed. We can ship it to you super easy um, and make removing those pedals um, a breeze. So that's good. Uh, more tools and again uh, this is going to be the Park Tool HCW 16.3. This is going to be a pedal wrench, so it's multi-use. This is a 15 mil box wrench, just like our PW5, uh, but it's going to have the addition of a, a chain whip. So you need this if you're going to remove the cassette or change the cassette on your bike. you got to have a chain whip to hold that cassette in place um, while you actually remove the top cap off of your cassette. So... Um, this is cool, HCW 16.3, uh, multi-purpose, and they even put a nice little hole in here so you can hang it on your tool board nice and easy without problem. So, again, 15 mil for your pedals. Very nice to have. All right. Oh, and here are the, this is the chain tool that those pins are going to go with. So, this is... A, this is the chain tool that we recommend here at the shop. This is the CT 3.3. It's gigantic. So big it doesn't even want to come out of its box. Oh, I just broke the box. All to show you guys what's happening. Good Lord. All right. Oh, that was quite the effort it took. Um, so this is the CT 3.3. If you're going to be buying a chain breaker, um, this is the one to get. I really like this guy um, just because it's super easy leverage. It doesn't hurt your hand when you go to, to open it up. These pins here are replaceable. The CT 3.3 can be, uh, you can replace the chain tool pin, the CTP from Park Tool, um, as needed. So that's really good, really nice, super easy to use on the hands. It slides back and forth, so it's going to work for any size chain. Um, really nice. Good option. Nice option to have. We'll get that back in the box. That is for sale, even though I destroyed the box a little bit. Sorry, guys, if you get this. Line that back. <laughs> All right. I think I've wasted enough of you guys this time mussing around. Hopefully you guys are here to waste time with me, though. If you're doing something else, maybe you're doing a little bit of bike maintenance as I'm talking about tools and bike shop orders. Maybe you are lubing your chain because you haven't done that for a couple of rides. Uh, so yeah, park tool chain uh, breaker, that's really nice. 
Uh, we also have the CT5. So this does not have replaceable pins. Oops, sorry. I don't know what camera we're on. This does not have replaceable pins. So the CT5, um, that is a replaceable pin. It's just a different, no. Uh, that appears to be the same pin. So, oh, good news. We learned something together. Even the CT5, you can replace the pins on those if you happen to break one. Um, I'll show you guys under your screen here. Um, and I, of course, didn't leave the other one out. Likely story. So here's our two chain tools from Park. You can see very obviously the difference between these. This hurts your hand. I've been using this in the shop for the last couple of weeks and it is brutal. Um, so if you get yourself the CT 3.3, you're going to have, it's going to make it a lot easier when you do go to break chains. Um, but you know, a little bit cheaper option. You can get the CT five and it's still both allow for, uh, chain, chain tool pins. So you can replace the pin, uh, very easily in your, your chain breaker tool. So yeah, CT 3.3 in a size comparison with the CT five, obviously a lot smaller. This some you could pack with you if you wanted to. This is really great for your home repair stand. So, um, as you're looping your chain, be thinking about, do you have a chain breaker tool? Let's just set this to the side this time. Just in case we need to pull it out again for more. All right, sorry, I'm bad with the screens. I haven't, this is the first bike shop order opening I've done for a while, it's hard to keep up. Um, so here we have the That's the Bullivo Westminster chime chiming off for the hour on us. Um, I um, would like to also point out the jerseys behind me. So we do sell those trail jerseys. We just put up a bunch of videos on cool trails in the area. So please go through and like those. Um, hopefully, while those don't get a ton of views right off, um, I think it'll serve well for people moving forward over the years. So. Um, go watch those videos. If you do come across one, watch it all the way through, like, comment, tell us your favorite part of that trail network, or maybe your, your favorite trail in the area when you see that. If you did watch one of those videos and you came to St. Louis, um, then post in the, in the comments, which one of those trails is your favorite on those videos. Help the next person out because they're going to see those videos. We don't have a ton of videos on our local trails here in St. Louis, but we do have a ton of really cool trails. So, um, I'll, I'll drop that for now, but, uh, the M10. So we're going to continue busting through this box. We're almost through one and then we'll have one more left after that. Uh, the M10 is Crank Brothers tool. Crank Brothers are our favorite tools here in this shop. Um, and the reason being they have a great warranty on them. So that's nice. Um, this has got a T25 Torx. The M10 does reasonably priced flathead. Um, you're going to have your Phillips, um, your hex wrenches all the way from two, all the way up to eight. Um, so basically everything you need with T25, two through eight, and then a Phillips and a flathead. Um, these are all replaceable. So let's say you round out your two mil and you have Crank Brothers send you a new one. Then um, you can simply take these off with a four mil and replace any of these as needed or maybe you want to add your own or something fun like that so get yourself a multi-tool from crank brothers all right park providing more things for tonight's episode very park heavy Here we got grease. You need grease. If you don't have grease in your work stand, it is an, as important as your chain lube. You're not going to use it as often, but it is important to have as far as maintenance goes on your bicycle. The reason places you might use it, um, you want to take your fork off every now and again and re-grease those bearings, make sure the cups are sitting in, those tend to creak a lot. We get a lot of moisture that goes up into our headset via the tire spitting into the bottom of the the uh, steer tube or into the bottom of the head tube. 
um, and it rusts out those bearings very often. So if you keep them greased up, it'll help keep uh, rust from happening. It'll help keep moisture out of there. It'll help keep things looking smooth. It'll help keep your bearings lasting longer. Uh, it'll help keep your bike from making creaking noises. Put Part Tool PPL-1 in your headset. Um, you know, I overdo it always. Again, I just want to keep that moisture out. And then if you're going to overdo it, that's obviously going to attract more dirt, so you need to do it more often. Uh, but keep that in mind. This is great for your axles as well. So if you're taking your front wheel on and off, you need to be greasing that axle, greasing the points where metals are going to contact each other. Um, you know, if your bike ends up sitting for a longer time, like we just got through a cold area and a lot of people didn't ride a ton, um, you know, that can be an issue. What I'm just noticing is the one in my hand was actually, so we have two different greases I brought in, uh, PPL, which is poly lube 1000 from part tool. This formula is formulated. <laughs> All right, I'm going to start over. We have two different greases here that I brought in. Uh, first off is your general purpose lube. It's going to be PPL-1 Poly Lube 1000. It's formulated specifically for bicycle components. Reducing bearing drag, reduce water, re resists water, and inhibits corrosion. Protects parts under extreme conditions. Um, so that's really important. Again, headsets. Uh, pedal threads, axles, you have to have PPL, um, you got to have poly lube in, in your home repair stand. That's going to come up for a bunch of different stuff. Uh, the other thing we have here now is super grip carbon and alloy assembly compound. This helps create a tighter grip between two slippery surfaces. Ideal for carbon, aluminum, and steel seat posts, handlebars, and stems. Not for threaded surfaces, obviously, because it's gritty. Uh, the grit's going to help it kind of grab. So, um, you know, again, if you're on a carbon bike, you should be using your torque wrench. You can't tighten things down as much. So, like, for instance, your brake or shift levers, those are going to be kind of at max, probably about 5 newton meters. Maybe some bars car, call, call for less. But if you don't want things moving around, which there's a reason why you might want your brake levers being able to move, um, but you can use some carbon compound to help keep things in place. So... Very cool. Lube it up, my friends. You have lube that keeps things moving smooth, and you got, uh, or you got grease that keeps things moving smooth, then you got grease that keeps things in place, which is hilarious. All right. Our last item in our first box. Well, well, now it's our last box. Our uh, item here is the Jaguar shift cable. So um, this is slick galvanized. The slick galvanized is going to be good for your one by systems. Um, so, you know, I on 12 speed stuff, I, use, I like to use like a really slick coated, something that's going to be even a little bit smoother than this. Uh, but 11, 10, 11, 9 speeds, all those completely fine with this. We use this for our repair bikes. But again, on those higher end drive trains, um, even the uh, slick galvanized, maybe you want to do better than that. Um, and then something to keep in mind as far as uh, your cables go, you're going to have shift cables or there's going to be brake cables out there in the world. I'll slap this on the close up screen. So you guys can see this is what a shift cable looks like. You're going to use this in your dropper cables um, and then obviously your shift cables. Um, but uh, yeah, and like I said, slick coating if you, for your 12 speed stuff is a better idea. Um, and then the measurement on this, boom, 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 is gonna be 1.1. So this is for shift cables, Shimano and SRAM. 1.2 is fine as well. And then 1.5 is gonna be um, mostly for your brake cables. There are 1.5 shift cables. Um, don't worry about that, ignore those. Uh, um, 1.5 is typically going to be for your brake cables. You can't put a thicker, you know, your housing on your bike is going to be 1.1. 1 .1. Uh, the pull ratio is how much those cable stretch and stuff is all factored in by SRAM and Shimano. Um, so make sure you're getting the 1.1s or 1.2s are probably going to be fine too, but 1.1. Um,
That's so fun. All right. Last box here. Hopefully it was nothing fragile. This might be interesting. It might not be. We don't know. An empty box, guys. They sent us an empty box. Oh. Well, this is exciting. It is quite the park tool day. Um, so, yeah, really beautiful park tool sign. Uh, carbon fiber on the background of this guy. I got that for behind the counter. Let's get you guys on a better screen to see that. All right. So, yeah, nice park tool sign. Um, we'll hang this above the tools. Maybe we'll leave it in the plastic for sale. Um, I don't think anyone will be interested in it, but this will signify where we sell our tools at the shop. So, how neat. Thanks, Park. We'll put that there, then you guys can check it out on that screen. How nice. All right, so that's fun. Um, another tool that's going to be important to have in your repair stand, um, staying in line, is the Park Tool MLP 1.2. So that's the Master Link Pliers 1.2. Uh, this is going to assist in not only um, you can squeeze it together, and that's going to remove um, your power links, or your master links or you can open it to lock them into place i like to do that rather than jamming the wheel so i know everything's nice and straight so let's show you guys on screen i'll show you these pliers a little bit closer up um, the importance of these and why you'd want to get a set of master link pliers is your regular pliers aren't they're going to be fatter on these tips so they're not going to fit between the chain very well and these little hooks here also help um, lock into that the uh, rollers on your your chain so things don't move around um, so overall just a lot easier to use something like this um, you're, you may be taking your master links off often so invest in a tool like this they're not cheap but um, they are high quality you buy them once and you're done so master link pliers get you some master link pliers uh, get a chain tool as well you'll need both um, this is a valve core tool, something else that's important as we do maintenance this winter. We sold through ours, um, so we're restocking on them. Valve core tools, again, you're going to remove, if you're running tubeless, your valve core is going to get jammed up. It's nice to be able to remove that. Um, another great thing about um, the valve core tool is that if you are trying to seat a tubeless tire and you don't have an air compressor, you don't have anything that's going to be um, super high pressure, you can use the remove the valve core and you can jam more air in there um, faster. So it allows you to help or helps you set up your tubeless setup. You can clean your valve stem while, or your valve core while you're in there. Um, but remove your valve core, then it allows you to jam air in faster um, and hopefully seat that tubeless tire on the rim. Um, it also helps if you're just removing air out of a tube or a tire or something, remove the valve core and it's going to happen a lot faster. So this is a handy little tool um, that you should have. You can tell these are all things that you should have in your work stand because I have to reorder them and it's winter time. So I only reorder things that I tell people or help people pick out or that people are coming in buying. Um, so this is the M17 from Crank Brothers. So this is our most popular multi-tool we sell. It is the most popular multi-tool that we sell from Crank Brothers and just tool overall. This is going to have a chain breaker tool with it. Um, this is reasonably priced, um, but it's got the chain breaker tool. That's a big advantage. It's got a true 8 mil on it where the other one you've got to slide some stuff on. Um, but this is going to go from, it's got a chain tool obviously, um, it's got a uh, spoke wrenches, one, two, three, and four. Uh, it's got uh, all your Allen's, so two through eight. 
screwdrivers, your Phillips and your flat, you're going to have your T25 Torx bit, and then you're going to have an 8 mil and a 10 mil wrench that could come in handy um, for some bikes as far as like older bikes or cheaper derailleurs or stuff like that. Um, or you might have, and you know, who, who knows where else you might have that. So that's pretty cool. So that's everything, guys. Again, um, a lot of the things you're seeing here are all things you should have um, for your home repair stand. You know, um, kind of the less important things, a chain web. Uh, you need to have maybe something to remove your pedals with. A uh, b bottom bracket tool if you have enduro bearings. Uh, but the really important things that everybody should have in their home stand uh, is a set of master link pliers if you're running a mountain bike. You should have a chain tool to resize a new chain. These are all things you need to be able to do at home. You need a valve core remover if you're running tubeless. That's going to help you get your setup done and allow you to replace your valve core if it's all gummy and sticky. You can put a new one in that's going to slide nicely. You need to have poly lube. You need to have grease. You should be greasing things at minimum your axle. Um, you know, there's threaded parts that need to be greased if you're repairing or replacing parts. Um, your pedals, those need grease. Your headset needs grease. Everything needs grease. Have grease. You should have grease. Everything needs grease, so you need grease. Um, and then a multi-tool is good to have. Uh, this is going to carry, you can use this at home, it, you can carry it on the trail. Uh, this is going to allow you to hit every bolt you need to make sure you're doing those bolt checks before between rides when you're cleaning things up. And then, of course, you can get the map for your pole so that that way um, things, the, you're, you, it's nice to be able to lean a bike against it, uh, whatever else. So come talk to us here at the Mountain Bike Shed. We are happy to tell you about all the wonderful tools and products to help make mountain biking easier. Um, yeah, check on in our website. We took the products off of there. We weren't selling much online. Um, so yeah, come by store. I've got a ton of videos on the trails. As you can see, the jerseys behind we have a lot of really great riding here in St. Louis. So if you are passing through, um, again, stop by, see me, uh, bring your bike with you and go ride some trails. Please subscribe, like, comment. Um, if there's a must have grease or tool or something fun that you use, Grab that, and if you already know that the BBT 47-12 is not for enduro bottom brackets, and it's for something else, and correct me in the comments, but I have to think that that's what I did that for. So, appreciate you guys tuning in. We'll see you soon.